In this video, I'm going to be going through logistic regression using TensorFlow. This is actually a continuation from my last uh, tutorial, so if you haven't watched that, please please do so. It will make you appreciate the maths behind logistic regression. And, and uh, also, it will help you see what how TensorFlow makes things, things a whole lot easier. Okay, so in, in this video, I'm going to be using TensorFlow 1.0. Uh, and that might be a warning to some of you because there are some breakages. But anyway, let's let's continue. So TensorFlow, uh, you're going to be importing as such, which is which is always what we do starting thing. There's there's really four things that you need to, about four things that you need to do. The first thing that you do with TensorFlow is you um, you create this placeholder things, right? And the placeholder uh, is you don't send in your entire data set. Okay, so I'm going to be sending them in batches. Right, so in this in this case, a batch size of twenty, um, and I'm going to say I'm going to create a placeholder such that it'll take in. Uh, if you want, I probably should have done batch size by two, batch size by d and batch size by one. Okay, but if you're not sure of what I'm going to be sending in for the batch size, um, I could just leave it as none. Okay, so this is just for my x and y that I'm sending in. The next thing that you're going to do is all your variables that feed into this neural network or, sorry, in this case, logistic regression, you're going to be initializing them here. So uh, as I call it as tf.variable. Okay, so it was placeholder before, now it's dot .variable. And I'm going to be creating a d by 1, uh, d by 1 uh, vector. Okay, and I'm going to initialize that as a random normal, uh, as a normally distributed thing. With a small standard deviation, this small standard deviation is actually going to be cru crucial. Okay, you don't want to make it too too large because you'll have numerical problems. And then I'm going to be squeezing this through activation function. So in this case, I want to be saying tf dot sigmoid. Okay, so whatever our matrix multiply by x and w, I'm going to pass. I'm going to squeeze it through a sigmoid and get my activations. Okay, and over here is my loss function. So let me just mathematically show you what I've just done. Okay, so the first thing, the first thing that I did is uh, well, let me just show you in here. Actually, it's probably cleaner. Uh, yeah. So the first thing that I did is say my Z's are the uh, a weight matrix multiplied by X, and the Z's that I get, I'm going to squeeze that through a sigmoid and get my activations. Okay. Uh, so uh, suppose in normal uh, regression, this would have been your Y hat, as such. Okay. I'm a loss function. It's going to be y multiplied by log of that activation and 1 minus y multiplied by log of the 1 minus a. Okay, so keep in mind a is a number between 0 and 1, uh, so, so there should be no problem. If I had a real number like I did with uh, uh, normal regression, these a's could have been negative and that's going to be co causing a problem with the log, right? So because I had a sigmoid, no problem over here. Okay, so. Um, Okay, so what I've done is the next thing is written down that the cross entropy uh, loss. Okay, so y multiplied by log of a, one minus y multiplied by log of one minus a, and then we're going to be taking the average of all that. You don't need to worry too much about this reduce because it's just a reference to map reduce, right? If you know about what that is, but it's just take the average. Okay, and then we're going to tell uh, TensorFlow what, how do we, how do we optimize this? So we're going to say tf.train, and then in this case, I've used gradient descent, which is, um, in, in this particular case, it should be stochastic gradient descent to be more correct. I'm going to say minimize cross-entropy. So cross-entropy is this what, I, what I've said, uh, the loss function is over here. Okay, so minimize cross-entropy. Um, and, uh, and then we're going to start the session, the TensorFlow session. All right, so we're going to say, tf.interactive session, which is what we, we, we're going to be using, and then we say initialize all variables. So, so far, none of this stuff over here, they, run, they haven't been run. Okay, so it's a lazy evaluation. So the x and the y's, they don't exist just yet. In fact, the w doesn't exist. So when I say initialize all variables, it's going to start initializing these to a random number. And this is the training part. Okay, so it, I'm going to be taking a... a from okay, let me just show you what x is. Okay, so x x dot shape. So it's a thousand by five. Okay, uh, in fact, x train x underscore train is five hundred. So I've just taken half of that. Oops, 
start to show you. Okay, so it's 500, 500 instances. Okay, so I'm going to be randomly choosing uh, a batch size, in this case 20 of them randomly. And I'm going to be and I'm going to be running uh, saying session.run train step. So train step over here is a gradient descent part. Okay, so it's going to run everything up until uh, this thing, including cross entropy. So cross entropy, I didn't need to write it over here, but I wanted to figure out what the loss is. Okay, so session.run will return whatever train stop uh, train underscore step returns, and I don't really care about that, but I do care about what the loss returns. Okay, so I want to find out what L is. And in order to do that, I need to feed in the X's and the Y's that I'm after. In this case, X underscore train, and I take only the, ind the 20 indices that I'm after. Same with Y. Okay, so I need to feed this through the feed dictionary. Okay, so let's see what happens when I do this. Okay, so TF the train. Oh, by the way, the reason I'm getting this warning is because I'm using TensorFlow 1.1.0. All right, and you'll start seeing that um, the loss starts decreasing. But eventually, I start getting these NAND values, okay. And the reason that I do that happens is because of this thing over here. These log log values. So the activation sometimes becomes really close to one or zero, okay. So if it becomes really close to zero, the the log of zero becomes um, negative infinity, right? And that is going to be a numerical problem. If it becomes close to one, one minus one will be zero, and there will be again negative infinity. Okay, so that it causes some problems. So uh, TensorFlow's uh, done a, done a fairly decent thing of working out the math so that it has a, a more numerically stable version of what I did over here with the cross entropy. So let's see how I do this more in a better way. Okay, so I have the x, the y's, and the w's exactly as I had before, but this time I'm just going to say z is tf matrix multiply x and w. I'm not going to be taking the sigmoid, okay? So this, taking the sigmoid is really what caused problems in the first place, right? So instead, TensorFlow has a built-in thing that says sigmoid cross entropy with logits, okay? So logit is this z value over here, okay? So um, and then you say logit is z, and the labels are whatever I feed in as before. Everything is else is exactly the same. Now if I run this. Uh, Oops, here we go. Okay, you start seeing that there's no NAND values, right? So it, it, it managed to reduce fairly fine. Okay, and the reason it goes up and down, if, if you're wondering, is because uh, it's stochastic gradient descent. Right? It's only taking batches of 20, so it, it's fine for it to go up and down as, as long as it's it on average, on the long run, going keep going down. Okay, so if I if I stack the real W with the thing over here, you'll again find that um, the, the, the signs are the same. Uh, but the, the numbers aren't exactly matching up. Okay, um, so yeah. So if I if I check, so uh, I, I check it up against a test set. So the first four lines over here is creating a test set, a random test set with the true W that I if, that I had from before, and then I infer it. Right. So the way that you infer it is you go sigmoid of x underscore test multiply that with my W with my estimated W. Right. So which is uh, what my TensorFlow spat out. So y inferred over here will give you a number between 0 and 1. Okay, so I suppose the probability of y being 1. If it's greater than 0.5, I'll call it 1. If it's less than 0.5, I'll call it 0. Okay, so in this case, the number of things that agree with the true y, y test, I should say, is 99 of them. Okay, so, so TensorFlow uh, TensorFlow's gone ahead and done that. For, what, what TensorFlow does is find out the, the w's for us. Okay, I could have done this step over here in TensorFlow as well, but I just did that in NumPy. Okay, uh, so yeah, so the, the the main thing about using TensorFlow it, is that you really don't have to worry about the maths. Okay, so if you watch my previous video, you'll find that the, the maths can be complicated, but it does all these uh, gradient calculations for itself. All you really have to specify is the loss function. Okay, so these two lines over here are really cru crucial. So you can you can go crazy with, with whatever loss function that you want, but of course there are fairly standard ones depending on what what the task is at hand. Um, so yeah, so I'll stop it there. But if you do have any questions or comments, please let me know. And again, thanks for watching.